So we're going to be looking at a program that we developed in collaboration with the business and law faculty last year. Um, but before we get into the details, um, we just wanted to say that we're um, talking from Darawal um, country and um, we pay our respects to um, their elders, past, future and present. All right. Um, next screen. Okay, um, so the centre, we actually did a collaboration with a research centre, the major research centre in BAL, so the Centre for Responsible Organisations and Practices. And the whole thing came about quite casually when um, the centre director and myself were walking up <laughs> to the faculty and um, we just met and started talking and he was lamenting about how the ECRs um, in the faculty have didn't have very good research skills after COVID. And that's when we started talking about, well, hey, you know, maybe we could do some workshops and things like that. So after that, Vicky and I got together and did a huge amount of brainstorming to see, well, you know, thinking about, well, what would a, a good ECR program actually look like? We were looking on the internet. Um, we consulted with colleagues, with our um, supervisor, um, and we eventually came up with eight different modules that we thought would be perfect. So we met with the research um, director and um, we were using Google Docs, um, for example, so we could all sort of... Um, write things in there, that document, and share. So we were negotiating the modules, the dates. Um, we also had an idea of using guest speakers, so we were negotiating who the guest speakers would actually be, who would be the best person who had the, the most expert knowledge on a particular topic, and then also about who, who does what, like, you know, who, who's going to actually advertise the program, who's going to organise all the guest speakers, all that sort of um, organisation details. Um, so after that initial meeting, we went away and we started developing the program and we were in regular um, email contact with the director, the, all the guest speakers and um, all the faculty staff as well. So it was quite um, involved, the process um, with it. So I'll go on to the next slide and Vicky's going to talk about um, virtual modules. Thank you, Alison. And hello, everyone. So this slide shows the title of the, the workshops that we delivered. And Alice, as Alison said, we ran eight workshops from the period of late May to September last year. The first four modules were run monthly and the last four modules we ran um, fortnightly. So in choosing the dates or scheduling the dates for these workshops, we liaised with the faculty administrative staff because we really wanted to ensure that our workshops did not conflict with other faculty events. Our, our goal was to maximise attendance. And we also decided to schedule the workshops to run across the university, university's common lunch hour, which was 12.30 to 1.30, again, to maximise attendance. So advertising or promotion of the workshops was via email. Alison and I would draft the invitation email, which was then sent out by the research centre's director because Alison and I thought by using um, the research director's name and position on the email would boost the credibility of the workshop and make the workshops more attractive to potential participants. The workshop was also advertised um, via a faculty research update email. Next slide. So this slide shows a typical example of the collaborative approach we took to the workshops and how they were structured. This is our module two, and it's actually one of the workshops that neither Alison um, or I presented at. Um, the guest speakers in this workshop were from the Research Services Office and as well we had two academics from the Research Centre itself. So the Research Services Office, they spoke about the resources and services that they have to support academics in seeking and applying for a grant. The invited academics spoke about their personal experiences and provided insights into um, the process of gaining successful grants. And it was really valuable having 
the academics share their personal experience. It, it really enhanced the content of the workshop. And Alison will be speaking a bit later of, of, of the, how much the participants like the guest speakers that we had. So you might be thinking, well, how did you and Alison decide on which guest speakers to invite? Well, we brainstormed and we drew on our experience of working with academics in their area of expertise. And as Alison said, we also sought input from the Research Centre's director on who to invite. And we also drew on the library's close relationship with the Research Services Office, with which whom we often worked and presented with um, through the years. So once a guest speaker was identified, we emailed them an invitation to speak along with a draft copy of the module and where they would fit in. And at the conclusion of the module, we emailed them with a thank you for participating. So all our workshops were presented online, much like today, and they were recorded. And the recordings and any PowerPoints were then um, added to the Research Centre's website. And actually, I, following the delivery of Module 2, um, the program was expanded from just the early career researchers and HDRs within the Crop Research Centre to the whole business and law faculty. So Alison and I were very happy with the attendance at the workshops. Uh, which averaged between 15 and 25 participants and, and actually far exceeded what we originally thought we would get. So I'm now going to pass you back to Alison, who's going to speak about the evaluation results of our workshop and key takeaways. Thank you, Vicky. So um, we had lots of informal um, evaluations after each of the workshops um, and by email, etc. But we decided to do an actual whole program survey right at the end. Um, with that one, um, we also talked to the um, director of the um, research institute as well to see if they wanted any questions um, to be asked of the participants as well. So this is sort of like a summary of the survey results. So we had 51 participants and 26 replies. Um, we actually had more participants than that in the um, workshop, but these are the ones we could identify their emails. <laughs> so um, the first part was about whether um, the modules were actually relevant to their role in what they're actually doing. And as you can see, we had 64% strongly agree and 34% agree, so that's 100%. <laughs> Um, and then we had wanted to have a look at the topics and see which ones were actually really relevant to what they were actually doing in, in their um, work, everyday work. So research impact was the highest. And then we had about publishing, looking at the quality of journals. And then equally, we had um, funding and all of the other ones that are listed. The research tools was a bit of a surprise um, for us. And originally, we're also surprised that um, the research director wanted to include that one in the actual modules as well. So that was um, it was a surprise. OK, um, then the next question was all about the guest speakers, because we just want to see what people felt about that. And the comment that's on there is just one of many comments that they had, but they were all um, very positive about having uh, academic guest speakers. Um, the last uh, section there, and I'll just move everybody's faces so I can read it. <laughs> okay, um, these were the, this was the questions that the research, uh, sorry, the research centre's um, director wanted to know, and he basically wanted to know what sort of workshops could they continue with, what sort of topics did people want to know. So there were things like research methods, um, research tools, again, that was a bit more in-depth, so like SPSS type tools, how do you actually use them, sustainability and SDGs. And then as special topics, um, the two that they picked out the, the most was about AI and machine learning in business and finance, and particularly in finance, and then all about block, blockchain technology. Um, so the research director was going to use those to continue on with the program and offer some more workshops. Okay, faces back. All right.
Um, now, our key two takeaways. Um, so the, probably the major one is um, it's a really good idea to plan with the academics. Um, we just found it right from the start. So um, get them involved in planning what the actual topics are, what the content is, what's important to them. Um, that gives really great ownership. And it means that over a long period of time, because, you know, we were from May to September, that they had buy-in. They, they really wanted these workshops to go ahead and they were very active in promoting them as well. Um, having the academics also involved in the planning also means that you get increased reach. And by this, what we mean is that um, the program director, the research center director, was talking to the dean of research and that's how it came about that, um, all the modules were expanded to the whole of the faculty because um, he wanted to actually have the whole faculty involved. So uh, there's lots of other little opportunities that sort of happen if the academics are involved. The next um, takeaway was to definitely use academic um, guest speakers. That was very, very successful. What we found is that with the audience or the participants, they really respected um, the people that we used. Um, and they respected actually having somebody there who could talk about um, the different topics. And usually, um, all the time really, um, they were very relatable experiences because the academics had been through that, they've been there, they've done that. Like as librarians, we tend to use databases, et cetera, but we, we, have we all um, <laughs> published a paper, for example? Have we all been gone through the review process? So they found that um, having the academic speakers was very valuable. The other thing we should we would say about that is to choose both senior and junior academics. Um, for example, we had um, the Dean of Research. He spoke about publishing, so like from getting an idea right up to actually publishing and also what happens um, with a desk reviewer. But then we also had a, a junior academic, for example, talking about um, their engagement and their impact and how they um, did this through using LinkedIn and using media um, uh, performances, I guess you would say. Um, yeah, so I think they valued having both the senior and the junior because with the junior academics, they could see it really related to where they were actually at at this time. Um, the next thing really is the question time. It's kind of a bit scary in some ways, but it, it is really good too. And because it's an open forum, um, the academics were bringing up things that were really pertinent to them and things that were um, they really wanted to know about. So it's, it was really good for us to get to know what issues they actually had um, and a perfect way to raise awareness on, on a, a particular topic. For example, with predatory publishing, we were started talking about that and we actually went a lot over time in that particular um, module because everybody was so interested in it and we generated a huge discussion about that and that that, that then later um, led to some more work in the faculty about predatory um, publishing so yeah so that all the issues and stuff that come up can lead to other things as well. Um, on the other side, on the right side, is all to do with um, libraries. So um, for Vicky and I, um, we found it was really, really valuable, um, particularly having the academic guest speakers so that we could work out what the issues were. And also um, the academics approach, which is actually quite usually quite different to uh, us as a librarian. Um, it's like approach to profiles and promoting themselves is a little different to what, what we would do. So it was really good to find out about that and, and what they think is important and what they focus on. Also great for networking. So we found that we got an increase in um, queries, for example, because people know who you are and they know that you're interested in a particular topic, so they'll come and talk to you about that. Um, another big uh, takeaway was to be prepared. <laughs> so go into any meeting or anything like that with a plan, something that you can actually talk about, um, but also be prepared for change because um, when you're collaborating with somebody in the faculty, um, you've got to remember that they've got their own goals and, and um, academic goals and the libraries, we've got our goals too. So it's sort of merging those goals together and achieving them um, together. Um, the last one is with what's next and um, 
Um, this is really um, about reusing um, the content and the modules. And we wanted to make sure that we've done all this work and over a long period of time we could reuse it. So um, that's what we're, we're doing. We're reusing material and we've also um, been using it, reusing it in our team. And it also helped us to work out what other modules that we could offer as a team to the whole of um, University of Wollongong um, academics. Another thing was about testing technology as well. So, for example, Vicky and I, um, we quite often present with um, Google Slides um, now, and we are presenting at the moment with Google Slides. Um, we just found that was easier. So it was it was a good, a good um, place to test um, technology as well. And then also um, all of this leads to uh, more opportunities as well. So we've had a chance to work um, with the faculty on other projects because they know you <laughs> and they know you're interested and um, they also see what sort of things that you do too. So it has led to a lot of other opportunities as well.